Well, good morning and welcome to our Mothering Sunday morning prayer service. I'm pleased to announce that all our churches will be reopening soon. St Luke's will be open for private prayer during Holy Week and there will be weekly meditations online and these will be shown in church. We'll be returning to public worship on for uh, Easter Day and uh, we start at 9.30 in St Luke's with Holy Communion. Then 11 o'clock there'll be morning prayer at St Thomas's and there'll be Holy Communion at St Saviour's at 11. Communion will be in one kind only and masks and strict social distancing will be in place. The service in St Luke's will be recorded and put online later in the day. If you would like to give a gift towards flowers in memory of a loved one, then please place money in an envelope clearly marked with the name of the people you want to remember and give it into the parish office. This is for St Luke's Church. After we open, we will no longer be able to have the uh, Zoom after Sunday worship coffee morning together, which is a great shame, but I can't be in two places at once. So I'm sorry about that, um, but it won't continue after Palm Sunday. Now, let's quieten heart, our hearts and our minds as we prepare to worship. Father God, we have gathered in our separate homes to worship you, to give you thanks for family, for parents, for mothers, for those who care for us, and to thank you for the love you show for us. Help us now to worship you, fill us with your spirit, and help us to feel your presence in our homes and in our hearts. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give us life. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy. To you be praise and praise and glory for ever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn, and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit, and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. We now come to that time of confession. We pray, come Holy Spirit of God and search our hearts with the light of Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Having heard those commandments, let us take time to ponder the past week and think about how, whether we've measured up to those commandments. When have we let the Lord down? Come, let us return to the Lord and say, Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud. 
like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment, bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. We're now going to listen to the choir singing some verses of Lord, for the years your love has kept and guided. Our first reading comes from 1 Samuel 1, 20 to 28. In due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son. She named him Samuel, for she said, I have asked him of the Lord. The man Elkanah and his household went up to offer to the Lord the yearly sacrifice and to pay his vow. But Hannah did not go up, for she said to her husband, As soon as the child is weaned, I will bring him, that he may appear in the presence of the Lord and remain there for ever. I will offer him as a Nazarite.
for all time. Her husband Elkanah said to her, Do what seems best to you. Wait until you have weaned him. Only may the Lord establish his word. So the woman remained and nursed her son until she weaned him. When she had weaned him, she took him up with her, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour, and a skin of wine. She brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh, <coughs> and the child was young. Then they slaughtered the bull, and they brought the child to Eli. And she said, O oh my Lord, as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who is standing here in your presence praying to the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted me the petition that I made to him. Therefore I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he is given to the Lord. She left him there for the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second Bible reading comes from John's Gospel, chapter 19, and beginning halfway through verse 25. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel Canticle Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of David. Through his holy promises, prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the people to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. And now let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your word to us, and we pray that as we ponder it, you'll speak into our hearts. Help us to understand what you are saying to each one of us and to our church. Minister to us through your Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Well, it wouldn't it be so much better to be able to celebrate Mothering Sunday with our families. This Mothering Sunday, more than any other I can remember, has so many levels of emotion to address. Mothering Sunday, as you know, was traditionally a time when people would give thanks to those who cared for them. It wasn't solely for mums. That's the commercialised Mother's Day version. But now, emotions, memories, both happy and difficult, Covid restrictions, current news items show that family life as a whole is under stress. There have been so many families wounded by the loss of their loved ones and not being able to be there for them or to say goodbye in the way they would want. I hear about families torn apart with resentment and fighting over wills. Others are struggling with addictions that hold loved ones captive. And then there are unresolved issues in relationships and those that are really sad deaths before a person's time. The Queen and the Royal Family are struggling very much in the public eye at the moment. And what about the parents of Sarah Everard? They must be feeling unconsolable grief. But also the parents of those young men and women we hear about who've lost their life to knife crime on our streets. Mary, the mother of our Lord, would have known that kind of pain and confusion as she stood at the foot of the cross. Then, of course, there are many children and young people who are struggling in care homes or on the streets and even in their own homes where people cannot cope with the stress of restrictions and are abusing their families. It makes my heart break. There are many families struggling to provide for their children. We'll be praying for agencies like the Children's Society, Compassion, Mother's Union, and the food bank later on. But all these emotions assaulting our hearts, we must not lose sight of God's love. Let us look up to him to heal us and show us the way forward. Jill, in her letter in the Pew News, reminds us that God kisses us better through the cross. Do take time to read it. We must give thanks for all those who have cared for us too, for they are our Heavenly Father's provision. The family is a key foundation for society and the Bible shows us how we can build that firm foundation. There are so many passages to choose from. There is Moses in the bulrushes, which we often use at this service. I wonder what others you might be able to think of. God our Father gathers his children under his wing like a mother hen gathers her chicks. And he teaches us so much. Parents try to provide and always want the best for us. In this world there are many different pressures on parents to provide more, to do this, to do that in our culture. And there are many parents across the world struggling to feed their families and keep them safe and try and work towards a better future. 
parents' provision helps a child to grow safely and to grow up strong. God, our Father, provides for each one of us. His provision for us is always what we need, but not always what we want. But he always wants the very best for us. That is his plan. He wishes to provide for us. Like us and our parents, when we listen to them and we follow their advice, we can flourish. One of the commandments is to respect our mothers and our fathers. And so it is with God. We will flourish if we listen to him, obey his advice and honour him as is his due. Not only do parents provide, but they try to protect their children. We always want to protect our children for hurt. Just like Sapphira, Moses' mum in that story of Moses in the bulrushes. We want to stop them feeling pain or making mistakes. We want to protect them. It's not always easy as a parent, is it? And I expect you can remember perhaps times when you ignored your parents in their efforts to protect us. But then there are some who feel that their parents are overprotective and hold on to them, cling on to them, not allowing them the freedom to learn and to grow from their own experience. It's not easy. Hannah hands Samuel over to the Lord. And there are times when that is all we can do as parents. And then we must let go and trust him to take care of our loved ones. Again, it's not always easy. It's about trusting that God really wants the best for each one of us and our children. God does promise us his protection. He is our refuge. Nothing can separate us from his love. And therefore, he seeks to protect us, sometimes from ourselves. So there's provision and protection, but there is also the role of passing on knowledge, teaching our children. We pass on our knowledge of God by modelling godly character, teaching our children about Jesus and his love for us on the cross and what it really means. And we are given teaching through God's word and through the Holy Spirit. Jesus modelled us for us godly character. We can learn so much, but we can't and shouldn't keep it for ourselves. We should pass it on to those around us, those that we love and care for and those that we don't know very well. Modelling godly character is so important in this day and age. And finally, there's prayer. Our reading from Samuel shows how Hannah prayed for a child and her prayer was answered. Prayer has the power to change things and to benefit our families more than we can think or imagine. I remember when one of my girls as a teenager for the first time ever decided that she and a friend would go on holiday together to the Greek islands. 
I held my breath and then I discovered that she was frightened underneath it all and I told her that I had handed her into God's care he would protect her and that I would be praying for her well the first night they arrived they missed the ferry to the first island they were going to go it was dark it was frightening and a lady came out little old lady came out and asked them if they would like a room for the night and she took them to her home where they were safe and my daughter said how much she was aware that God was protecting her and keeping her safe aware of my prayers it's so important to pray Paul reveals to Timothy how his grandmother prayed regularly for him. You know, we all have a role to play in the well-being of our families and, in the, and for our church family. And that role is prayer. Were you given the privilege of being asked to be a godparent? Are you still praying for your Godchild? Once again this year, we'll be joining the Archbishop of Canterbury's call to pray, Thy Kingdom Come, throughout the days between Ascension Day and Pentecost. We're asked to choose five people for whom to pray, Thy Kingdom Come in their lives. You know, you don't have to wait until then, why not start early and start praying for them right now? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we remember Mary, the mother of Jesus, as we worship today. We think of her example to all those who care for others. We remember her willingness to obey and her thoughtfulness. We remember her risk-taking and her confusion. We remember her deep concern and her painful sorrow. Help us to learn from the mother of Jesus and give thanks for all who care for us. We pray for those whom we love who are yet to know your love in their lives. Amen. Well now, together we're going to affirm our belief in the words of the Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again and ascended, he ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The choir will sing Father, I place into your hands.
And now the collect for Mothering Sunday. God of love, passionate and strong, tender and careful, watch over us and hold us all the days of our life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When I say the words, we are all your children, please respond, help us to grow in love. We are all your children, help us to grow in love. First of all, a prayer of thanksgiving. Loving God, we give thanks for all who care for us and those who have encouraged us and helped us to grow. We give thanks for those who have forgiven us when we have hurt them. We give thanks to those who have cared for us when we have been unwell. We give thanks for those who have supported us when times are hard. We give thanks for those who have challenged us and we give thanks to those for those who have told us about you loving god we give you thanks we are all your children help us to grow in love loving father we pray for all who are persecuted for their faith and for whom following, following you brings danger. We pray for those who are new to faith and we pray for those no long, who no longer walk with you. We thank you, Lord, for the example of those whose faith shines out in their lives. We are all your children. Help us to grow in faith and love. We pray, loving Father, we pray for those who are forced to leave their homes. We pray for the Children's Society. We pray for families throughout the world who are refugees. We pray for those who through war and famine must watch their children die. We pray for those whose parents are dying because of Covid. We pray for governments everywhere to be led in the ways of love, mercy and justice. We pray for peace and for comfort. We are all your children. Help us to grow in love. Father, loving Father, we pray for all the mothering that goes on in this community. We pray for the pastoral care group doing their best to bring comfort to those who are isolated in their own home. We pray, Lord, for the Mother's Union and for the work that they do in supporting family life. We pray particularly for our own little group. We pray, Lord, for those we cannot or have not been able to touch, those who crave for tenderness. We pray for those who are weary with the struggle to be strong. 
We pray for organisations like Compassion that help to support families, for those children who are sponsored and for their sponsors. Lord, we are your children. Help us to grow in love. Loving Father, we pray for all new parents and their babies. But we also pray for all who are vulnerable, that they may be protected from harm. We pray for families trying to provide for their children. And we particularly pray for the food bank. We are all your children. Help us grow in love. We remember those who are suffering from sickness, body, mind or spirit. And we particularly pray at this time for Margaret Miller, Peg Malpas, Anthony Staples, Anne Bateman, Kate Brantingham, Gary Pollock, Stephen Bradburn, Teresa and Isla, Sheila Rumins, Victoria Pinton, Karen Hine, Ethel Taylor, Charles McCumber, Eric Farr, Rowan Goddell, Kath Cross, Catherine Herschel, Barry Manley, Stuart Jakes, Rob Faulkner and Barbara and others known to us. Be with those who minister to them in the health service and social services. Give them wisdom and guidance for all carers, Lord. We ask for the strengthening of your Holy Spirit. We are all your children. Help us to grow in love. <coughs> Loving Father, we pray for those who remember their mothers, grandmothers and those who've cared for them that have passed on. We pray, Lord, for those who have just recently lost their loved ones. We pray for those who have died, remembering David, known as Graham Jones, Abba Hilda Morrison and Ken Wilkinson. We pray that you'll bless their families with your peace, your presence and your comfort. We commend all those whom we love, into your protection. We are all your children. Help us to grow in love. Loving Father, we give you thanks for the comfort you provide in all our troubles and for the richness of all our relationships. Amen. And so we gather our prayers Trusting in the compassion of God, praying with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> Let's listen to the choir singing, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling.
And now the blessing. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and all those whom you love now and always. Amen. Thank you for joining me for this Mothering Sunday service. I do commend to you George's Lent study this afternoon. It will be online and you can pick up the notes as well on our website. But now I say go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Goodbye.